So I have a short presentation, and then I'd like to have a, I, then I have questions for you, and you can have questions for me. So I, my name is Josh Levenger, and I am a developer and work on uh, projects uh, all over the world, and all of them have been open source, and I've learned a couple of ways to make money doing this, and I have questions about how that could work for you all as well. So a little background, I've been doing this since 2014. I, I build open tools for uh, what are called mission-driven organizations, or um, often activists, political groups, uh, organizations uh, like, like governments sometimes. And I've worked across different contexts uh, in the United States and Europe, and also in uh, developing countries like, like Libya and Uganda and Peru and Guyana. <clears throat> And the tools I've built have helped millions of people uh, interact with their governments and make political change, because I most often work with political organizations. And I've found a couple of ways to make money with free software, free code. Uh, the, the first is to do basically custom development, where someone asks you to build something and you build it for them, and then you release the code as open as uh, part of the, the license that you agree with the client. Uh, there's doing consulting and hosting, and there's finding external support. And I'll go into each of these in a little more detail. First, uh, custom development is basic, it's a basic fee for service arrangement. Uh, you have a project, someone pays you on a particular basis to build that, to do that project. And then because you believe in free code or they believe in free code, you release that to others. Uh, so you can charge by time, you know, an hourly or a daily rate or a weekly rate. Um, and that's, that's sort of how people often start. They're like, they, they understand, it's a very easy way to, to charge. You understand my time is worth $10, $20 an hour, uh, that's what we charge, and that's, that's, uh, that's how you bill. Building up a, a little bit, you can charge based on what features you are developing. So this new uh, piece of software will cost $5,000, something like that. You can also do it um, by sprint, so not just b based on the scope of a particular feature, but uh, if you're working in a more agile model uh, by a sprint. So each week we'll do a certain amount, it costs so much, and we'll get something done, but we don't guarantee it will be everything done. Um, and then the, the best way to make money on this is to charge based on value. So if you know that the code that you are writing will produce millions of dollars of value for your client, you charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for that, and it's a good deal for, for both of you. This is difficult if the value you're providing is not monetary. If, say, you are working for a government or for a nonprofit, um, getting that relationship or understanding how that works can be difficult. Um, but in my under and I have never done this, but my understanding is that that is the way to make a lot of money doing consulting and custom development. And custom development, um, it changes over time. If you have a project one month, you, you do a lot of hours, you make money. Some months, you don't make as much money. It's very uh, variable. Um, so it, money goes up and down over time. And basically, the way you make it grow is by adding more people. Uh, you scale with effort. So the more people you have, the more work you can do, the more money you make. A couple examples of this type of project that I've done uh, was working with the Libyan government in, uh, in North Africa and an external group uh, called, the, called Cactus Development, where we built uh, a way for people to register to vote over SMS. Uh, I was there for a couple of months. You know, I got paid by the day, and at the end we had code that the government really liked and the people used, and we released it as open source uh, for other countries to use as well. Uh, so that's kind of your, your standard, like you are building a project for a particular amount of time or money, and you release the code as, as open. Another way to do this is by providing the code for free and doing consulting or, uh, and, and hosting. So in this case, you often have a support contract with uh, the, the client or your users, which could be on a monthly basis or an, an annual basis. Um, and you can often charge for hosting. So you know, the code is free for, to download, but if you want it to run for, your, for each individual instance, uh, you charge per month or you charge to set it up and then they run it themselves. And this is how WordPress and some other systems uh, li like that work. You can also then build new features into the open code based on user requests. Um, and that respects the, the open license 
and you sort of share the results with, um, with all of the users, all, all the folks who use, use that software. Um, this is also, I think, a fairly straightforward way of, of structuring uh, a, a, a paid open source hosting system or a paid open source uh, business uh, because it's, it scales uh, basically linearly with, uh, with sales. So in this case, you make more money than more people who use the software or, or who pay you to use the software, and you have to have um, business development folks and support folks to make that scale work. Um, I have only just gotten here in my personal um, software uh, story, but I do have, have a, a tool I can, I can talk about that, that does that. The, the, the tool that I've done that, that I, I provide in this manner is, uh, is called a, is a call tool. So it, in the, the United States, it connects uh, individuals with their representatives, with the government, and I provide that for different organizations that want to use it. Yeah, we're good. Um, so in that case, I built it for one client originally. Uh, s I found six or 10 others that wanted to do, do the same thing. I provide them their own instances, and I charge them a monthly fee based on the number of people who use the tool. Um, so then in that case, I make the difference between uh, what it costs me to run and what I charge them to, to use. Uh, WordPress and, and lots, of, um, lots of other systems work, work this way as well, where you can uh, you know, charge someone to set up a blog. Uh, WordPress gives the code for free. Uh, WordPress, uh, the organization, also does this um, with a hosting system. If WordPress is sort of notoriously difficult to scale, um, and so they've, they've provided a, a supported hosted environment that you pay you know, $100 a month to use. A third way of doing open source software development uh, is with external support. And sort of the old way of doing this is to beg uh, people for money, uh, your family, your friends, or foundations. Uh, and all of those require access to people with money. Uh, and that's, that can be very limiting to, to getting that uh, to work. Um, the new way of doing that is by finding sponsors, um, corp corporations or uh, smaller you know, nonprofits. Uh, there's also people that have done uh, bug or feature bounties where you say, you know, I want this particular thing built and anyone who can build it uh, will get a certain amount of money. Uh, you may have seen that those on, on, on GitHub sort of commit bounties. Uh, and there's also some emerging work on doing uh, cryptographic currencies um, and doing you know, mining in the browser uh, to, to provide funding for, for projects, uh, ongoing support. Um, I think that's, I, I'm curious to see how well that works for, for those organizations. Uh, and these, this sort of new way of doing it requires talent. So there's a, a different um, hurdle to get over to, to get into um, the, this, to, to make this model work, but uh, it's, it's not as much uh, an access issue as, as being able to actually make this, this system work yourself. And the idea, the idea of this is that it scales exponentially. So it scales with growth. The more people who use it, the more people who tell others, the more money you make, and it's, it's a virtuous cycle. A couple examples of this that I've, that I've worked on, um, a, a radio project called Rudio Ru that was, uh, we, we built in, in Uganda um, that is for low power radio stations. That was funded by a foundation in the United States called the Knight Foundation. And I've also worked with a group called Digital Democracy that d did um, mapping for, for, on your phone for uh, people in, in South America, and in, particularly indigenous people uh, who, have, who face resource extraction and, and uh, environmental issues. And that work was founded by the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation. So, uh, you know, if you know someone who is a movie star, you can get their money and, and do good work. But if you don't know that person, it is, it is hard to, to do that. Uh, lots of other organizations or, or open source projects work this way. Mozilla is mostly funded by Google. React and Angular are Facebook and, and, and also Google. Uh, and there are some other small examples that are fairly recent, uh, mostly in the JavaScript community, of uh, using collectives and, and sort of pooled shared funding. Uh, Node is an example of this, and Webpack, and there's, uh, if you go to opencollective.org, you can see a couple of others. I am also skeptical of this, of this working, and I haven't seen, uh, or I haven't seen these small projects get very large. 
and, and that's okay. You know, they can still pay their developers and they can uh, ensure, you know, make good code and ensure a good lifestyle for their, uh, for their people, but they are not going to be, um, it is going to be hard to make millions of dollars uh, with, with that sort of crowdfunding small, uh, small uh, approach. So my question for, for you all, because I'm not an expert about this, is all of these assume capitalism and access to funds and sort of a, a top-down approach um, that I'm used to in the United States. So my question for you is, how does this work in Cuba now? How do you make money as an open source developer? Uh, I have some guesses, but I, I don't know. Um, I would imagine there is some state support, and some of you may be students. Um, there are, I have heard of some worker cooperatives uh, here in Havana. And I've also heard of people doing uh, international development where they do work for uh, people in the United States or, or elsewhere and, and they you know, sort of trade um, fee for service. So those are my, my questions. Uh, and then sort of a, a, another broad question is, you know, that I don't know how it does work and I'd love to know how it could work. Uh, what are the challenges or opportunities uh, for how Cuba is changing um, and how can we build technology that reflects our values of sharing and openness um, and to build the future we want and not just the one that, that exists. So those are my questions because I'm not the expert. Um, I'd love to ha have maybe a, a go around or sort of a, a discussion uh, from you all about uh, how you have been able to, to make money uh, building open source software and, and how you would like to. So if anyone. That's fine. That's a great idea.